Hello. So I wanted to talk to you today about a model I came across called Mini GPT-4. So let's just jump into it and see what it does. So we've seen all these large language models kind of do this impressive stuff with text. But this thing here can take in images and it's incorporated next to a large language model. And the reason why this is so unique is that it's all open source. So it uses Vicuna and it uses a uh, a way of taking images in and processing that and putting it into a language that the large language model can understand using some something called blip version 2. So I think of it as a visual transformer. So similar to that of stable diffusion, uh, blip 1.1 and clip and these sort of other image generation models and stuff like that. So here's an example of the demo they've got working. So in, they've passed this image into the, the demo and it's got two mugs here of cats on them but the, the pr user, the prompt, so the, the person who's given the prompt hasn't specified this cats on them and it said can you design an advert from them and it kind of said okay yeah I'll design an advert and it says okay these are cats so it was able to work out these were cats just by looking at the image not only that and another example they gave was they gave a website template and said can you design the HTML for this and build like a mock-up and it did it gave all that HTML there and they ran the HTML and it looked like this, so like this sort of web page. Which is what one of the, the developers for OpenAI showed GPT-4 was capable of. So that's pretty cool. Not only that, they've got this other stuff here where a, a picture of a bowl was given and saying how should I cook this. Um, it said to cook ramen noodles so it was able to work out they were noodles. And it was also able to work out the egg shapes here which I thought was pretty cool as well. So not only that, there's other examples here as well. So a couple of my favorites are, it showed an image of this and said, could you give me a short introduction of this film? The, Godf the Godfather and kind of gave a description of that. So my thinking here is that, or my assumption here is that the large language model is already trained on understanding what this movie is. It's just because the blip version two, so this visual transformer was able to create the embeddings so that the large language models were able to interpret what's actually being seen. So yeah, also this washing machine breaking down saying how should I fix this and it's given like a step-by-step -step guide. One thing I did find particularly interesting was this one. Uh, so there's a guy running across, I think it's a guy, it's a pretty small image, but it's an individual running across the road and it says can you describe this image and it, says, it describes a person running across a busy street with cars and buses passing by. The person is wearing black, blah, 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 and surveillance camera, and there's a red circle around it. Then the user said, what do you think of this person's behavior? And it said, I do not have um, um, ability to behave or whatever. I don't have that because of my AI model. But it says, it appears the person is running across a busy street, and this could be considered dangerous and potentially hazardous to the person's safety. So it gave a negative connotation to what it saw which I thought was pretty cool because it's able to work out right and wrong based on what it sees. Um, it said the person should always take care when crossing the surroundings. Uh, yeah, and another one was pretty cool was it was able to identify a manga, a manga uh, drawing, so it was able to work out Goku was present in this, which I thought was pretty cool. So yeah, so those are some of the examples that they've really pre-trained for us, and you can, uh, you can actually check out the demo from these links here, and I'll put them in the description below. They found that a lot of people are using the website, so they're given multiple links. So, yeah, I guess people have gotten, like, word of this. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the model, of how it works. So they have a Vicuna model, and I've talked about Vicuna on the channel before. It's uh, it's built on top of the, the Alpaca model, I believe. And behind that is built on the Llama model. So Vicuna is built on top of the Alpaca alpaca fine-tuned and then alpaca alpaca is defined on llama it's it gets very confusing but a lot of this stuff is built on top of each other so you can't necessarily use it in a business setting but this is all open source and if your computer meets the spec required to run this stuff you should be able to run it now this q format and vit as i spoke about before is the blip 2 um, they also have a paper if you want to check it out and that's why i was able to work out this is blip um, blip 2 because the VIT here is, is based on that um, yeah so 
the interesting part of what they did for this to be um, to, for this to work was that they freeze the weights for the Vicuna model and they freeze the weights for Blip2 and built this intermediate layer called linear layer and they trained that or they did a pre-training on just raw image to uh, raw image to text and what they found was it wasn't very coherent it gave out kind of loose responses then they did a fine tunement on some other data set so I think this was high quality data um, from image paired with a prompt that I think it was about five million pairs of that I believe um, yeah approximately five million aligned image text pairs and they they fine-tuned it on that and that was able to give it a really coherent responses it allowed it to work so well so so essentially what they did was they froze, they didn't work on this, they didn't work on this, they just trained this main part with uh, I think quite a number of GPUs under kind of Google's environment. Um, and yeah, and they built this model which is pretty, works pretty well, I mean you can see the responses here. Now I did run this myself on, um, uh, on the demos they provided which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I gave it this image because it was an image I had at hand. Um, I just said, could you tell me what's going on? The image said there's a woman standing behind a counter in a restaurant, which is more of a coffee shop, but you know, that still works. Smiling and holding a cup of coffee. Yep, seems reasonable. She's wearing an apron, that's true. Name tag, not necessarily, but maybe it thinks that buckle there's a name tag. Okay. And the person behind, the, it's the menu board behind there with various food items. It looks like that. The restaurant appears to be busy. Um, I guess you can make that sort of assumption because it looks like the guy here is working as well. He looks like he's serving someone too. Um, yeah, some stuff is not necessarily true, but some of the other aspects or the um, assertions are you can say are true. I did try writing another command, but it froze and it's been running for quite a while now. Um, I think for the models or for the demos, the smaller the image, the better it is. I do have another one here. Now, the previous video I was working on before making this one was... Um, using AI models to clean plate videos or using AI to edit videos and I had this at hand and this was a low resolution shot of Godzilla on a ship and so I asked what's going on in the image and it says the image shows a large monster known as Godzilla so that's pretty cool I was able to know what Godzilla was attacking a city with buildings and ships in the background the monster is standing on its hind legs roaring and that doesn't seem true because there's a little gap in its mouth it is standing on its hind legs the city's on fire, people are running away from the monster, and the image is from a movie or video game. Now, I don't see any people, and it's not necessarily a building, it's more of a, a, a an aircraft carrier, but those are big as buildings, so I guess you can give it some leeway there. It also said from the image, can you, so I asked, can you, can you tell me how big the monster is? So it said the monster appears to be very large, standing on its high legs, it appears to be taller than buildings in the background, it's difficult to work out what it is. <laughs> it's worth noting the, the actual size of the monster is likely exaggerated for drama dramatic effects. Um, yeah, and I said, what, what's the monster standing on? It said it appears the monster is standing on the ground or the beach. It shows a large body of water, so that's pretty interesting. It was able to work out waters behind it. Um, the monster's feet are visible on the foreground, suggesting it's standing on land rather than water, but it is possible that the monster is standing on a platform or other type of elevated surface but it's not clear from the image provided. So that's pretty cool. It was able to do inference. Like, okay, so it's work, It's standing on something and there's water behind it. I thought it was pretty cool. Another thing was, I wanted to see its ability to understand colors. So I asked it in this image here, which is another low res, but it's kind of a beautiful shot. Uh, can, you, can you tell me what colors on the image? The colors are pink, purple, orange. The sun is setting behind the tree, casting a warmth glow on the landscape, cool. The sky is a deep pink, purple with the clouds in the distance. The tree is a long figure on a hill with its branches reaching up towards the sky. It's quite poetic here. The water in the background is a deep blue and the waves lapping against the shore. Now, it doesn't really show a shore here and there's not really a wave. There's currents, sure, but there's not really a wave there. Uh, the last the mix of grass and rocks. I don't know where it's got that from. The tree is standing out against the sky. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. It does have a habit of repeating itself, though. That's kind of a complete duplicate of the below, or of the above. So that's pretty interesting. I was able to kind of work out colors, and it also gave it quite po po poetically. 
of what was going on in the image. So I think that's the large language model here coming at play. And the last one I did was this one. So this is the royal family of the UK. Um, there's the Queen, Prince William, his wife, and some of his kids. And then that's the... Uh, I forgot his name again. Anyway, you, you know what I mean. So I said, can you describe the image to me? The image shows a group of people standing on a balcony. Now this is the... Um, Buckingham Palace does have a balcony, but it isn't necessarily... It wasn't necessarily able to work it out, but I thought it was quite interesting that it could pretty much determine this must be a balcony. Um, it includes a woman in a red dress, so <laughs> it thinks this guy here is red dress, so Prince William's a woman. Um, a man in a military uniform and a child in a red dress, or a white dress, sorry. Uh, so yeah, pr pr that, that pretty well. They're all smiling and looking at the camera. Now they're looking up, but it looks, the eyes are pretty blurry, so we'll give it that. The image is taken at a high angle, showing the entire balcony, people on it, build in the background will, should have a flag on top. So the background building is not necessarily shown, but that is true. The Buckingham Palace does have a flag on top, so I'm thinking that's more from the large language model doing its inferencing. I said, do you know who the people are? It said, I can't, but based on the image, it looks like they could be possibly royal family members. So I thought that was pretty cool, that it was able to infer that they must be part of the royal family or some sort of public figures. So yeah, those are all the examples I can really come up with. It does take a bit of time to like write a query and then later on. Um, but yeah, they've got a paper here if you want to learn more about it. They they have um, released a lot of the stuff on GitHub. So they've released the data set, um, the project itself, um, some more stuff on how they trained it and stuff like that. So I'd highly recommend you check them out. Also, it's worth giving a shout out to the company behind it. So Vision Care Research Group. Cursed, um, supported by a guy called Mohammed El Hosoni, who's done some work with Facebook and stuff like that. So check him out, give him a love <laughs> in some way, I don't know, maybe say thanks or something. Uh, but yeah, this stuff's pretty damn interesting because all of this is open source. And GPT-4 was promised to be able to do this, but they still haven't given out the capability of processing images. Yet this stuff has come along, all of it's open source, if you have a powerful computer enough, you can run all this stuff. So that's pretty incredible. So yeah, if you like what you saw, maybe like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Otherwise, bye-bye.